But good morning, Michael here. And um, I was just thinking about how in a few short months where we have gotten to. <laughs> um, but our meditation this morning is of a lot of good news. It's of a favorable time from the Lord. And um, what I like about the exposition is that it synopsizes how we get to our present state and the Psalms now declares beyond that when God is again favorable to us. So the index verse is from Psalms 8510 that says, Mercy and truth are met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. And Psalms 85 reads from verse 1 to 13, which is the whole chapter. Lord, thou hast been favorable unto thy land. Thou hast brought back the captivity of Jacob. Thou hast forgiven the iniquity of thy people. Thou hast covered all their sin, Selah. Thou hast taken away all thy wrath. Thou hast turned thyself from thy fierceness of thine anger. Turn us, O God, of our salvation, and cause thine anger towards us to cease. Wilt thou be angry with us forever? Wilt thou draw out thine anger to all generations? Wilt thou not revive us again, that thy people may rejoice in thee? Show us thy mercy, O Lord, and grant us thy salvation. I will hear what the God what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace unto his people and to his saints, but let them not turn again to folly. Surely his salvation is nigh them that fear him, that glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth are met together, righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. Yea, the Lord shall give that which is good, and our land shall yield her increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and shall set us in the way of his steps. Now turning to Spurgeon's exposition from the treasure of David on verse 10. Mercy and truth are met together. In answer to prayer, the exultant psalmist sees the attributes of God confederating to bless the once afflicted nation. Mercy comes hand in hand with truth to fulfill the faithful promise of their gracious God. The people recognize at once the grace and the veracity of Jehovah. He is to them neither tyrant nor a deceiver. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. The Lord, whose justly severity inflicted the smart, now in pity sends peace to bind up the wound. The people being now made willing to forsake their sins and to follow after righteousness, find peace granted to them at once. The war drum throbbed no longer, and the battle flags were furled. For idolatry was forsaken, and Jehovah was adored. This appears to be the immediate and primary meaning of these verses. But the inner sense is Christ Jesus, the reconciling word. In him, the attributes of God unite in glad unanimity in the salvation of guilty men. They meet and embrace in such a manner as else were inconceivable either to our just fears or to our enlightened hopes. God is as true as if he had fulfilled every letter of his threatenings, as righteous as if he had never spoken peace to a sinner's conscience. His love in undiminished splendor shines forth, but no other of his blessed characteristics is eclipsed thereby. It is a custom of modern thinkers 
to make sport of this representation of the result of our Lord's substitutionary atonement. But had they ever been themselves made to feel the weight of sin upon a spiritually awakened conscience, they would cease from their vain ridicule. Their doctrine of atonement has well been described by Dr. Duncan as the admission that the Lord Jesus did something or other which somehow or other was in some way or other connected with man's salvation. <laughs> this is their substitute for substitution. Our facts are infinitely superior to their dreams, and yet they sneer. It is but natural that natural men should do so. We cannot expect animals to set much store by the discoveries of science. Neither can we hope to see unspiritual men rightly estimate the solution of spiritual problems. They are far above and out of their sight. Meanwhile, it remains for those who rejoice in the great reconciliation to continue both to wonder and adore.